Welcome back, everybody. Well, um, if you've seen any of the news today, you know that a uh, very sit serious situation developing with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, I'm American, of course, but I'm an American who is kind of a monarchist. I've uh, got a great deal of respect for Queen Elizabeth II uh, and just fascinated by the whole institution of the monarchy. And uh, whether or not she lives, and I hope that she does, but it seems pretty grave, uh, I thought it might be a, a good time, historically speaking, to take a look at the line of succession uh, for the British royal th uh, family, uh, because understanding how it works today gives us a little bit of an uh, understanding into how it has worked historically, uh, and understanding a lot of the succession helps us see properly the um, many hundreds of years of British history. Uh, because this succession has played such a key role in so many of the things that have happened. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to go to our friend uh, over at Useful Charts and watch his video on the line of succession to the British Royal Throne. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on with that historically and, and just kind of make some parallels and talk about some other things that have happened. Hi, this is Matt Baker, and today I'm going to explain to you the line of succession to the British throne as of February 2022. I covered this topic four years ago, and then again two years ago, but there's been several changes since then, so I thought another update was in order. Also next month, the Queen will celebrate her Platinum Jubilee, celebrating a record-breaking 70 years on the throne. So what better time to talk about some of the more famous members of the British royal family, as well as some of the more lesser known ones. So let's talk first of all about where that fits uh, her 70 years on the throne. Where does that fit historically? Because it's not the longest that a monarch's ever been on the throne, but it is really far up the list. So here we have the list and uh, you see Louis XIV of France. He was four years old, I think, when he became king. Uh, so almost his entire life he was king. You know, the queen, different story. She was in her mid-20s when her father passed away and she became the queen. She is uh, a little less than two years behind Louis XIV at this point. And then you have uh, Rama IX of Thailand, 70 years, 126 days. So she just passed uh, Rama IX and Johann II of Liechtenstein, um, who were all 70 years. Uh, and then now we see the ones who were up there in terms of upper 60 years. Franz Joseph I, historically, is one of those ones we talk a lot about because he was the uh, emperor of the Austro-Hungarian Empire when uh, World War I broke out and he died midway through that war. Uh, I see Queen Victoria there on the list. You see King Ferdinand III of uh, the Two Sicilies, which is now part of what we know as Italy today. Um, Emperor Showa, who is, uh, we know him as Hirohito. Uh, I believe in Japan, after an emperor passes away, he is given a different name, and so that's why he's known as Emperor Showa today. Um, but 62 years uh, from 1926 to 1989, just to name a few. So let's get to it. Currently, Queen Elizabeth has 24 direct descendants, four children, eight grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. Awesome. These 24 individuals are thus the first 24 people in the line of succession. First in line is, of course, her eldest son, Charles. Born in 1948, Charles is also her eldest child. Some people mistakenly think that his sister, Princess Anne, is the eldest child, but she was actually born in 1950 making her the second born. So, and at the time, she would have been second in line to the throne after, Char well, third in line to the throne because at the time Charles and Anne were born, their grandfather, King George VI, was still on the throne. Um, but yeah, under the new rules, at the time, the rules push females all the way to the end of the line, basically. So, um, under the new rules, uh, if Anne had been born first, she would have been the heir. Uh, but that rule was only changed, I believe, after 
um, George and Charlotte were born or around that time. So uh, if George's firstborn child is a female, she will inherit the throne, no matter how many boys he has. In the United Kingdom, the first in line to the throne, a.k.a. the heir apparent, is usually given the title Prince of Wales. I say usually because, to date, it has only ever been given to a male. For example, prior to becoming monarch, Queen Elizabeth was not the Princess of Wales, mm. even though she was first in line to the throne. In other words, the title Prince of Wales is not a title that someone gets automatically. Right. In the case of Charles, he received it at age nine, six years after his mother became queen. However, Prince of Wales is not the only title that Charles holds. The next two most important are the English title, Duke of Cornwall, and the Scottish title, Duke of Rothsey. These two titles were automatically given to him as soon as his mother became queen, as they are always automatically given to the person who is first in line to the throne, as long as that person is male. From 1981 to 1996, Charles was married to Diana, who was thus the Princess of Wales. Together, they had two children, William and Harry. But as you probably know, Diana died in a tragic car accident in 1997. And uh, kind of an interesting thing that uh, when it comes to surnames, last names, they don't technically have one. Uh, but there are ones that they use. And so, for example, when Harry was in the military, uh, his surname that showed up on his uniform was Wales. Um, like, I know, uh, I think Charles is Charles Philip Arthur George is his full name. Um, you know, they, they get all these first names. But uh, technically, the house name is Windsor. Uh, the surname that gets used by, like, Harry's children is Mountbatten Windsor, which Mountbatten was inherited from Prince Philip, whose name wasn't originally Mountbatten. It was Battenberg, which was German. And so they anglicized it to make it Mountbatten, to make it sound less German. Charles has since remarried to Camilla, the woman he was in love with prior to marrying Diana. Although Camilla now has the legal right to use the right. title Princess of Wales. And that's the thing people forget is that she goes by the title Duchess of Cornwall, which is one of the titles, but legally she is the Princess of Wales, whether they call her that or not. She does not. Instead, she uses Duchess of Cornwall, since that is her husband's next most important title. In fact, the couple also has indicated that when Charles becomes king, she will not use the title Queen Consort. That is true, but more recently they've backed off of that. And I think that she will indeed be the Queen Consort. Um, it, it sounded to me in the last year or so from statements that have been made like they've changed their mind on that one. Instead, she will be known as the princess consort. Now, another mistaken belief out there is that Charles is ineligible to become king because he's a divorcee who married a divorcee, Camilla having been previously married to a man named Andrew Parker Bowles. Now, it is interesting, and I understand why people feel that way, because Charles's uncle, the queen's uncle, or great uncle, uh, Charles's great uncle, the queen's uncle, uh, Edward VIII had to abdicate for that very reason, because when you become the monarch, you also become the head of the Church of England. And it was a big deal at the time that he was going to marry a divorced American. Uh, so things have definitely changed. This misunderstanding is based on the fact that back in 1936, King Edward VIII gave up the throne in order to marry an American divorcee named Wallace Simpson. But times were different back then. Yeah. In the 1930s, the Church of England, of which the British monarch is the head, did not permit divorced people to remarry. But in 2002, that prohibition was dropped. Charles and Camilla married in 2005, three years after the change. So there's nothing stopping Charles from becoming king. Yep. A related rumor is that the queen has simply declared that she will skip Charles she and automatically it. pass the throne to William. This is simply not true. Whether people like it or not, the fact is, when Queen Elizabeth dies, Charles, so long as he survives his mom, will become king. 
I don't think legally she can do that. That would take an act of parliament to bypass Charles in the line of succession. Uh, now, the big question, of course, is what name will Charles use as king? A lot of speculation he might go with King George VII after his grandfather and great-grandfather were George V and George VI. George is one of his names. He's Charles Philip Arthur George, so he certainly could. Uh, just because the first two Charleses didn't have much of a good track record, the first Charles was beheaded. Um, so, But I, I have a feeling just because of how long he's been known as Prince Charles and being that he's in his 70s, I think he'll probably go by Charles III, but we'll see. At that point, he will become Charles III, or possibly George VII. Uh, I just said monarchs that. Monarchs can That's funny. actually choose the name. I haven't seen this name. video. Okay, moving on. The United Kingdom follows a hereditary system known as primogeniture, which means that the throne always passes from firstborn to firstborn, not from sibling to sibling. So after Charles, the next person in line is not one of his younger siblings. Which everybody's breathing a sigh of relief over because Andrew was next in line before they all started having kids. Whew. But rather his oldest son, William. Prior to his marriage, William was known simply as Prince William of Wales. However, when he married Kate Middleton, he was given a dukedom, as is the custom. So nowadays he is best known as the Duke of Cambridge and his wife as Catherine the Duchess of Cambridge. Now, I should point out that in most cases, these dukedoms are simply ceremonial titles. Right. Originally, a duke would have been in charge of a territory known as a duchy, but there is no duchy of Cambridge. So Now, it should be mentioned, though, that in the case of the Queen, where you see that she's listed as Duke of Lancaster, that is important because she actually does own, technically, the Duchy of Lancaster. Um, and it's really super complicated how it all works. But, um, you know, a lot of people make the argument that basically the royal family's living off of the state. That's really not the case. If anything, they're giving more money to the state than they'd have to if they were private citizens. If they were private citizens, they'd be far wealthier than they actually are because they own all of this property that basically they turn all the income from over to the state and then the state budgets back to them a certain amount of that money. And so if they actually received all of it, it'd be a lot of money. And so a lot of the wealth that the royal family uh, generates comes from the Duchy of Lancaster. So basically the title Duke of Cambridge is just a title. There are, however, two exceptions to this. Earlier, I mentioned that Charles is the Duke of Cornwall. Well, there is in fact a Duchy of Cornwall spread out over England, and that duchy exists in order to provide income to the heir apparent. Right. The other real duchy is the... I swear, I haven't seen this video. I keep saying things that then they immediately say afterwards. I wasn't expecting this. The Duchy of Lancaster being the lands that are held by the Queen herself in order to provide income to the monarch. So unofficially, the queen, in addition to being the queen, is also the Duke of Lancaster. I'd also like to point out that unofficially, she is also the Duke of Normandy, which is a title that goes all the way back William. to William the Conqueror. Although the Duchy of Normandy, which was located primarily in France, no longer exists, England does still control the islands of Jersey and Guernsey, and thus, in those two locations, the Queen is still known as the Duke of Normandy. That's awesome. But back to the line of succession. After William comes his three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. Now, now I've heard several people say that this is unfair, and that Prince Harry should come directly after William. Not how it However, works. what those people forget is that if the succession rules were to be changed to give siblings priority over children, then the throne would have to pass to Charles's siblings first, before right. both William and Harry. Thus, in that scenario, Harry would still be number six. Now, at this point, I do want to point out a change in the succession rules that was made back in the year 2013. Prior to this date, the UK followed what's called male preference primogeniture, which means that sons were given priority over daughters. 
So under this system, Louis would have come before his older sister Charlotte. But since 2013, the UK follows absolute primogeniture, which means that the line of succession now simply follows birth order. Okay, so... So, yeah, why that's important is because um, moving forward, like I said, if George has a daughter first, she would be next in line to the throne uh, when he becomes king. I should point out, too, and maybe he'll mention this at some point, but... You see these little symbols. Those are the folks who actually have the title prince or princess. So you can see, for example, Archie and Lilibet don't have that title. Now, I believe they are entitled to that if they had wanted to, because Harry being the son of a man who's going to be king. Uh, I believe that Archie and Lilibet could have been known as prince and princess, but they chose not to do that, similar to how it is with Edward's children. After William and William and Kate's children comes Prince Harry at number six, whose formal name is actually Prince Henry, Harry simply being a nickname. He, as you probably know, married the American actress Meghan Markle in 2018. At that time, they were given the titles Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Since then, they have had two children, Archie and Lilibet who are currently numbers 7 and 8 in the line of succession. Now, at this point, I want to explain the terms prince and princess. Generally speaking, in the UK, this designation is only given to the children of the monarch, as well as the male line grandchildren. Right. So, for example, the queen's son Charles is, of course, a prince, along with the queen's two grandchildren through him, William and Harry, since they are in the male line. However, although the queen's daughter Anne is a princess, her two children are not prince and princess. Because, But James and Louise, who are the children of uh, Prince Edward, would be entitled to that uh, designation, but I th think that was Edward and Sophie's choice not to do that they are not in the male line. So take note that on this chart, anyone who is a prince or princess has a special crown symbol next to their number. Which brings me back to William and Harry's children. In 2012, prior to any of these five children being born, and prior even to Harry meeting Meghan, the Queen decided that any and all children born to William would receive princely titles, being that they would be in the direct line of succession. So only in this one exception would any of the monarch's great-grandchildren get to be a prince or princess. Now, this created a bit of a controversy once Harry had children, because mm. his children were not given the titles of prince and princess. However, I should point out that once Charles becomes king, they will, legally speaking, automatically become prince and princess as the male line grandchildren of the king. But I could be wrong about this. I think that's a decision by Harry and Meghan that they don't want them to have that, but maybe I'm wrong. Now, whether or not they will actually use those titles is yet to be seen, because as of right now, Harry and Meghan have stated that they wish for their children to grow up as private citizens, not as royals. This is because back in 2020, Harry and Meghan decided to step down from their royal roles, due in part to the strain that the media's racist treatment toward Meghan was having on their mental health. Meghan is mixed race, having a black mother and a white father. However, a lot of people have misunderstood what Harry and Meghan's so-called departure from the royal family actually means. For one thing, it does not mean that Harry or his children have been removed from right. the line of succession. They are, in fact, still numbers 6, 7, and 8. And Harry and Meghan are still a duke and duchess, as well as a prince and princess. Harry is a prince by right of birth, and Meghan is a princess by right of marriage, just like Kate. The only real change is that they are no longer working members of the royal family. Right, and you'll notice they don't use the titles of princess. Like, we don't call her Princess Catherine. Now, that'll change when uh, Prince Charles becomes king and William is made Prince of Wales. 
she will be the princess of Wales at that point. It'd be interesting to see how they handle that because there's so much sensitivity around Diana being princess of Wales. How's that going to be handled by her son? I would like to think that they would try to go back to some normalcy there and that Catherine would take the title Princess of Wales at that point. This means that they no longer represent the Queen in any official capacity. They no longer have any royal patronages. Harry no longer holds any honorary military appointments, and both of them no longer use the terms his or her royal highness. Now, all of this is important because there's a similar situation with regard to the next person on the list, albeit for a very different reason. Yep. As I mentioned earlier, the Queen's next eldest child, after Charles, is actually Anne. However, because Anne was born back when male preference primogeniture was still in effect, and because the 2013 change was not retroactive, she is placed in the line of succession after her two younger brothers and their descendants. This means that the next person is actually Prince Andrew at number nine. Now here's the thing. Prince Andrew was, for many years, close friends with the convicted child sex trafficker, Jeffrey Epstein. And Andrew is currently facing his own trial for allegedly raping one of Epstein's underaged victims. Because of the trial, the Queen recently removed all of Andrew's royal patronages and military titles, as well as his right to use the phrase, His Royal Highness. However, no person, even if convicted of a crime and sent to prison, is ever removed from the line of succession. A person can only be removed by dying, or by Parliament passing a special law, or by becoming the monarch and then abdicating. So Andrew still sits at number nine. He also still holds the title Duke of York, which traditionally is given to the second-born son of the monarch. Now, Andrew has two daughters with his former wife, Sarah Ferguson. So the next person in line is his eldest daughter, Princess Beatrice. Now, <clears throat> crazy thing about the title Duke of York it has never been passed on to the child of a Duke of York. Every time it's been created, uh, going back, I think, to King Edward IV, every time the title uh, Duke of York has been created, that Duke has either become the monarch or died without male heirs to pass it on to. In fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, of course, the Duke of York, the original time it was created is the only time it's been passed down. Richard Duke of York is the one who was the head of the, the White Rose side in the Wars of the Roses. And when when he died, uh, was executed after um, a battle in which he was captured at Wakefield, uh, he passed that title on to his son Edward, who became Edward IV. The title merges into the crown at that point. Edward IV's second son, Richard, was the Duke of York. He was one of the princes in the tower, so he died. So then the title uh, is then next given to Henry Tudor, the son of King Henry VII, who is the second son. Arthur, his older brother, is the Prince of Wales. So when Arthur dies and Henry becomes king, Duke of York merges back with the crown again. So then, because Henry had no uh, second son to pass it on to, uh, the next creation is for Charles Stuart, who is the second son of uh, King James I of England, James VI of Scotland. But his older brother dies, Charles becomes king. Uh, then his son, uh, James Stuart, is Duke of York. He becomes king after his brother. Uh, and so then the next creation we have within the legitimate line is George, who becomes George V, who again was the second son of King Edward VII, but comes to the throne because his older brother, Albert Victor, dies. Uh, then again, it happens with the second son of King George V, uh, who becomes George VI because his older brother uh, abdicates the throne. And now Prince Andrew has no sons. So once again, when he dies, the title of Duke of York is going to merge back into the crown uh, and technically could go to Harry, 
or it could wait and get passed down and be given to Louis instead. We'll have to wait and see. Note that she's a princess because she's a male line grandchild. Beatrice married Italian noble Eduardo Mozzi in 2020, and just last year they had their first child, a daughter named Sienna, who now sits at number 11. So kind of awesome to think about the fact that number 11 in the line of succession is an Italian, basically, um, with the last name Mozzi. I love that. I love how you kind of see those things happen. Beatrice also has a stepson named Christopher, who is Eduardo's son from a previous relationship. That child, nor Eduardo himself, are in the line of succession, as spouses and stepchildren are never included. To be in the line of succession, you have to be either a descendant of the current monarch or the descendant of a previous monarch. Okay, Beatrice's sister Eugenie comes next at number 12. Eugenie is married to Jack Brooksbank, and they have a son named August, who is number 13. Then comes the Queen's third son, Prince Edward, who is married to Sophie. Currently, they hold the titles Earl and Countess of Wessex. Note that in the UK, an Earl is the same rank as a Count. And since there is no female equivalent of an Earl, an Earl's wife is called a Countess. So he chose the title Earl of Wessex because he saw it on the movie um, Shakespeare in Love, and he liked the sound of the title. Uh, He could have been made a duke, and he will become a duke, as I'm sure he's going to mention here uh, about the title Duke of Edinburgh. So why is Edward an earl instead of a duke? Well, this is because he is waiting to receive the title of Duke of Edinburgh, which was previously held by his father, Prince Philip. And speaking of Prince Philip, I should probably mention a few things about him. He, of course, died just last year just two months before he would have turned 100. I've sometimes been asked why he was called a prince instead of a king. To explain, let's go back one generation to Queen Elizabeth's parents, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. In the UK, whenever the reigning monarch is a male, he is called a king, and his wife is called a queen. However, please note that there are two different types of queens. Mm -hmm. A queen who is married to a king is simply a queen consort. Queen Elizabeth II is a different type of queen. Because her father did not have any sons, she became the reigning monarch after his death. She is thus a queen regnant, meaning she's the one who holds the position of monarch, not her husband. In the UK, whenever there's a queen regnant, Her husband is called a prince rather than a king. One exception to that was when William and Mary, it was, let's see, William the third and Mary the second. They were actually joint monarchs. Uh, They both had a claim on the throne and during the Glorious Revolution in the 1680s, they come to the throne and they reigned as joint monarchs. Uh, So she, Mary was in fact not the queen consort. She was a queen regnant at the same time her husband was king. Please also note that a queen regnant is different from a queen regent. A queen regent is simply a temporary position. An example of that would be when Henry VIII was uh, in France fighting against the French. Uh, His wife, Catherine of Aragon, was the queen regent. She was serving as regent. Sometimes a queen is regent when uh, their child is in a minority and they're not old enough to reign, things like that. One in which a mother serves on behalf of an underaged monarch. Queen Elizabeth is not a queen regent. She's a queen regnant. And only queen regnants are numbered. The current queen is Elizabeth II because this person was Queen Elizabeth I. Her mother, although she was also named Elizabeth, does not count because she was merely a consort, not a reigning monarch. But she was known as Queen Elizabeth, and so they called her Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother to distinguish her from the monarch. But back to Prince Philip. In addition to being Prince Consort, he was also given the title Duke of Edinburgh. During his lifetime, he expressed his wish that this title would eventually go to his third son, Edward. Uh, Interesting note about Philip. He is a descendant of Queen Victoria. 
So he and Elizabeth are cousins, like second, third cousins, something like that. Not uncommon in mili- in uh, royal families. And his grandfather was the king of Greece. Uh, and he has the same... Um, his male line goes back to King Christian of Denmark. So uh, a lot of royalty in Philip's family, even though he himself was not a monarch. But even though Philip has now passed away, the title cannot go to Edward yet. In the UK, titles automatically pass to the eldest son. Therefore, technically, the current Duke of Edinburgh right. is Prince Charles. However, when Charles becomes king, he will no longer be able to hold any lesser titles. When this happens, the title will become extinct. At this point, he will then be able to bestow the title anew on his brother Edward. As Edward is unlikely to ever become king, the title Duke of Edinburgh will probably stay in his branch of the family right. in the future, with Edward's son James eventually inheriting the title some. And we see that happening in some cases. So, for example, you have Richard, the Duke of Gloucester, which is amazing, by the way, because Richard III, the king, he was Duke of Gloucester at one time. Uh, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, is a descendant. Uh, he's a cousin of the queen, and he received that title from his father, who was a brother of uh, King George VI. Day. Note that James, who is number 15, as well as his sister Louise, who is number 16, do not have the prince and princess symbols, even though they are male line grandchildren. Legally, they do have the right to be prince and princess. However, their parents have chosen to raise them without these titles, in order to lessen the pressure on them. Note that they also both use the surname Mountbatten Windsor. Generally speaking, the senior members of the royal family do not use surnames, but the junior members of the royal family use Mountbatten Windsor. Mountbatten is the name of Prince Philip's family, and Windsor, of course, is the name of the current royal house. Some people have wondered whether the name of the royal house will change from Windsor to Mountbatten after Queen Elizabeth dies. Although this would indeed be what usually would happen, in this case it will most likely not happen, as Queen Elizabeth has clearly stated her wish that the royal house name remain Windsor. So technically the royal house name should be Saxe Coburg and Gotha, which is also uh, the male line house that had uh, been on the thrones of Portugal. Um, there was another one too, I forget what it is, but also Bulgaria. Um, in fact, the, the last czar of Bulgaria is still alive. He, I think, was just a kid uh, during World War II when he inherited that title. And he's the same male line uh, as King George VI was, uh, going back to the same guy. And um, yeah, Saxe Coburg and Gotha sounded very German. And so during World War I, when everybody was against anything German because they were at war, they changed the house name to Windsor, uh, using Windsor Castle, of course. Um, and so technically, when Prince Charles uh, comes to the throne, it should be a new house. It should be Mountbatten uh, because it's a new male line. But of course, they're not doing it that way uh, because the, of the change that was made by the queen. In perpetuity. Okay, next up is the queen's only daughter, Princess Anne. Like I said earlier, she's actually older than both Andrew and Edward. But because she was born under the earlier male preference system, she and her descendants come after them and their descendants. Anne holds the special title of Princess Royal. Traditionally, this title is given to the eldest daughter of a monarch. So if a monarch has several daughters, there will only ever be one Princess Royal. The next person to hold the title will likely be Princess Charlotte. Yep. However, this will only happen after the death of Princess Anne and after her father William becomes king. Anyway, Anne was previously married to Mark Phillips, with whom she had two children, Peter and Zara. So it's kind of interesting to note that um, Queen Elizabeth's father came to the throne because his brother chose to marry a divorced woman. And three of Queen Elizabeth's four children have been divorced. Uh, the only exception is Edward. However, she is currently married to retired Navy officer Timothy Lawrence. Like I mentioned earlier, Peter and Zara are not a prince and princess because they are female line grandchildren of the queen. But they are still in the line of succession. Peter currently sits at 18, with his two young daughters at 19 and 20. Zara is therefore now at 21, with her three children at 22, 23, and 24. 
Zara, along with both her mother and father, have all competed in the Olympic Games in the equestrian sports. And she is currently married to a former rugby player, Mike Tyndall. So that takes care of the first 24 people in the line of succession, all direct descendants of the current monarch, Queen Elizabeth. The next six people are all descendants of the Queen's younger sister, Margaret, who passed away back in 2002. Margaret is often confused with Anne, but please note that Anne is the Queen's daughter, and Margaret was the Queen's sister. So coming in at number 24... She died just a couple of months before their mother did. Five is Margaret's son David, who inherited his father's title, Count of Snowdon. He is followed by his two children, Charles and Margarita. Next comes his sister, Lady Sarah Chatto, and her two sons, Samuel and Arthur. That takes care of all the living descendants of King George VI. To continue down the line of succession, we thus have to look farther back in the tree. First of all, let me point out that King George's older brother, Edward, who served as King Edward VIII, before stepping down to marry Wallace Simpson, did not have any children. But even if he did, they would not have been included in the line of succession, because when he abdicated, he gave up his rights to the throne for both himself and any potential descendants. After abdication, he and his wife were known as the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. So had he remained king uh, and still died with no children... Uh, then the throne still would have passed to Queen Elizabeth. It just would have done so 20 years later than it did because he died, I think, in like 1972. Uh, So the throne still would have then passed. His brother was gone by that point um, then to his daughter. However, King George did have several younger brothers, and therefore the descendants of those younger brothers come next in the line of succession. We start with the descendants of Prince Harry, Duke of Gloucester. His eldest son, William, died in a plane crash, and therefore it was his second son, Prince Richard, who ended up inheriting his titles. I think Prince Henry also died in a plane crash. I want to check that out. Okay, I was getting ahead of myself. That's actually Prince George, the Duke of Kent, who also died in a plane crash. Uh, Kind of interesting when you think about the fact that he was George, Prince George, and his brother was King George, but that's the way it goes. Richard, a first cousin to Queen Elizabeth, is therefore next in the line of succession. And you see Richard all the time at royal function. He's, He's a very active member of the royal family. After all the descendants of the Queen and the Queen's sister. He currently sits at number 31. Interestingly, though, he is actually the most senior agnatic member of the House of Windsor. Agnatic means coming from a strictly male-only line. I won't go through all of his children and grandchildren, but basically they make up numbers 32 through 40. Next comes the descendants of King George's younger brother, George who was Duke of Kent. Now, the reason King George's younger brother was George is because King George wasn't George. He was Albert. Um, I think Albert Frederick Arthur George or something like that. Um, I I know George was one of his names. Now, wait a second, you might say. How can a George have a brother who is also named George? I just said that Well, remember how I mentioned earlier that a monarch can actually choose their regnal name? Well, before he became king... George VI was actually known as Albert. His younger brother, George, who is thought to have been bisexual, died in a military plane crash during World War II. The current Duke of Kent is therefore his eldest son, Prince Edward, who is currently number 41. In the- so again, you see these uh, Richard, Edward, Michael, and Alexandra all carry the title prince or princess because they are male line direct male line descendants of a king. The line of succession. Edward's children and grandchildren therefore come in at numbers 42 through 51. Included here is the fashion model Lady Amelia Windsor. I should say, backing up for a second, because somebody will probably catch this, direct male line grandchildren of a king. Another generation down, I don't think they're still prince or princess. At number 43. 
Her older brother Edward is the most senior person to be excluded from the line of succession because he chose to become a Catholic. Yes, Catholics are still prohibited from inheriting the right. throne. But they're no longer prohibited from marrying Catholics because you can't be Catholic and be the head of the Church of England. Nowadays, a royal can marry a Catholic without losing their rights, but they themselves he, can... The bottom line here, folks, is that Matt from Useful Charts, being somebody who's into history and into genealogy just as I am, he basically thinks exactly the same way that I do. So it makes total sense that I'm saying things right before he does. ...not be a Catholic. In fact, they can't be anything other than a Protestant. So no Jews, Hindus, or Buddhists either. Anyway, next comes Edward's younger brother, Prince Michael of Kent, and his descendants, as well as their sister, Princess Alexandra, and her descendants. This takes us all the way down to number 63. Note that these four individuals all hold the rank of prince or princess, but their descendants do not. This is because the four of them are all male line grandchildren of a former monarch. And you see John there. Uh, John died as a teenager. He had epilepsy. And contrary to what people say, he was not hidden from public view. They weren't like, you know, trying to keep people from seeing him and ashamed of him. That wasn't the case. Uh, but they were very private about his illness. Because of this, they do still perform royal duties from time to time. King George VI did have a fourth brother named John. But unfortunately, John had epilepsy and died at age 13. There was, however, one more sibling, a sister named Mary. She was the person who held the title of Princess Royal before Princess Anne. Her descendants, through her two sons, are at positions 64 through 94. We've now covered every living descendant of King George V. But the line of succession does not end there. If we want to continue, we would next look at the descendants of his siblings, and then the descendants of the previous monarch's siblings, and so forth. Doing this, we would find that the King of Norway actually sits somewhere in the 100s in the line of succession to the British throne. And eventually, we would find the King of Spain and the King of Sweden as well. Being that most people with British descent can somehow trace a line back to some medieval English king. And I say that all the time. People always tell me, oh man, you're related to all these famous people. I'm like, no, I just know about mine. I've done a lot of research into it. Anybody with British descent, which almost all of my DNA is British. I've got a little bit of Scandinavian, some German, some African, um, but most of it's British. And so my descent from James IV of Scotland, for example, is not all that unusual. Does this mean that pretty much every Protestant in the English-speaking world fits somewhere in the line of succession? No, nope, doesn't work Well, like that. no. The line of succession does not go on forever. Because of certain laws passed a long time ago by the Parliament, in order to be included in the line of succession, you have to be a Protestant descendant of this person here, Sophia of the Palatinate. This is why the Jacobite line, which is technically more senior, does not currently hold the throne. If you want to learn more about that, we've got a video about it, which I'll link to in the description. Okay, one last thing. What would happen if Prince Charles were to die before his mother? Would the throne then pass to Prince Andrew? Nope. Absolutely not. The order of the numbers on this chart always stays the same. If someone dies, everybody below them simply goes up one position. And if someone has a new baby, everyone below them simply goes down one position. So in other words, for example, if um, Archie has a child and none of those other folks ahead of him have a child, then Lilibet gets mar moved down to ninth, Andrew gets moved to 10th, Beatrice to 11, and so on. So, for example, if Harry and Meghan were to have another child, that child would be placed at number 9, and Prince Andrew would fall to number 10, Beatrice to number 11, and so forth. If it so happens that a child inherits the throne, that child will simply be assigned a regent to take care of matters before the child becomes of age. Okay, so that was a look at the current line of succession to the British throne. 
If you're interested in royal history, I'd suggest you take a look at the posters available at usefulcharts.com. I love Useful Charts. I'll throw some links down in the description to some of the reactions I've done to some of his other content. Please definitely check him out. I'll put a link to this original video as well. Uh, he and I have talked a few times, gotten to become friends a little bit, so I'm very glad to support his channel, hopefully throw some new subscribers his way. Uh, and certainly my thoughts and my prayers are with Her Majesty the Queen and their entire family. Whatever you think of the monarchy, whatever you think of what has happened in their family, they are still human beings. This is still a grandmother, a mother, a great-grandmother, an aunt. Um, so let's keep that in mind. God save the Queen.